In this video, Ultrasonic Sensor HCSR04 is programmed in assembly to compute and display distance between object and sensor. The distance is displayed in centimeters on MAX7219 screen. The HCSR04 module is an ultrasonic ranging sensor, which is made of the ultrasonic transmitter and the ultrasonic receiver. And on the other side of the module, we have control circuitry, which is used to generate the control signals needed to communicate with a microcontroller, and also the logic circuitry to control the ultrasonic transceiver. The sensor has electrical rating of 5 volt DC, 15 milliampere, and the module transmits and receives ultrasonic wave at 40 hertz. The range of the module is from 2 cm to 400 cm with an accuracy of 3 mm. The field of view angle of the module is 15 degrees. HCSR04 sensor is interfaced with a microcontroller using two lines and the operation of the sensor is as follows. The microcontroller starts by sending a trigger pulse to the sensor and the trigger pulse should be at least 10 microseconds wide. Once the sensor receives the trigger pulse, it will then transmit ultrasonic wave made of 8 pulses at 40 Hz, and the wave is then reflected off an object and reflected back to the sensor. And then the sensor will then generate a uh, echo pulse which is sent to the microcontroller and the width of the echo pulse is proportional to the distance between the sensor and the object. The microcontroller will then measure the pulse width of the echo pulse and then use it to calculate the distance between the sensor and the object. In a previous video, I have programmed timer 1 in normal mode or CTC mode in order to give us time delays. In this video, we need to program timer 1 so that it is in the input capture mode. The purpose is to measure the pulse width of the incoming uh, echo pulse. When we program timer 1 in input capture, pin PB0 of the 80 mega microcontroller becomes pin input capture for timer 1, ready to detect any rising or falling edge of a pulse. So when there's an echo pulse and we have the rising edge falling onto this pin, timer 1 is interrupted and the count value at that time is saved. And when a falling edge pulse is incident, timer 1 is again interrupted and the count value at that incident is saved. And using these two count values, we can then calculate and determine the pulse width of the echo pulse. Timer 1 is a 16-bit timer that will count from 0 to 65,535 and then repeat. When timer 1 is in input capture and there is a rising edge pulse at pin input capture timer 1, this will cause an interrupt and the count value C1 is stored automatically in the input capture register. When the falling edge pulse is incident on the input capture pin, the interrupt occurs and the count value C2 is stored automatically in the input capture register. The captured values C1 and C2 are 16-bit numbers which are automatically stored in the 16-bit register of the input uh, capture. We have the low byte register and there is also a high byte register. Now we are concerned only with the low byte register for simplicity, so we are ignoring the high byte value. So the low byte values of count 1 and count 2 are stored in two registers, which can then be used later on to compute the pulse width. Once we have the two captured values C1 and C2, we can then continue and calculate the pulse width in millisecond, which is given in this equation here. We first take the difference of the two counts values, C2 minus C1, divided by the 
system frequency 16 megahertz divided by the prescaler for timer 1. As an example, let's say the difference in the count value was 88 counts and the prescaler is 64. Applying this equation, we find the pulse width is 0.35 milliseconds. Once we have the pulse width in milliseconds, we next calculate the distance in centimeters using this formula. Distance is time multiplied by speed of sound. Now the time is half of the pulse width. Since the pulse width is proportional to the distance, total distance, from the sensor to the object and back from the object to the sensor. And the speed of sound is given by this value here. So continuing with the previous example, we have calculated the pulse width as 0.35 milliseconds. So we apply the formula. Distance would be the half of the pulse width multiplied by the speed of sound, which gives us 6 centimeters. Note here that when we choose a prescaler of 1024, the equation for finding the distance can be simplified. So if we multiply this value with this value, we get 2.19. Now we can simplify the equation if we cancel out this 2 with the 2.19 here. And the end result is the distance given by this approximation, which is just the difference between the count values. In this video, I'll be using this formula to calculate the distance in centimeters. Now note that this would give us a maximum distance that we can cover is 255 centimeters. Using this approximation will also introduce a 9% error. Now let's see how we can program timer 1 in input capture. These are the important registers of timer 1. We have control register A and B and we have the flag register. Now First, we need to program timer 1 in normal mode by putting zeros in these bits here and also in the bits here for the control register B. And we need to choose the prescalar value by programming these bits here. And these two bits here are related for the input capture. So this bit here will enable the input capture and if we put a 1 here, it means a, the input capture will be for the rising edge of a pulse and a 0 would mean a falling edge of the pulse. And this bit here, when enabled, will uh, enable the noise cancellation feature of the input capture. Within the flag register, we have this important uh, flag here, which is the input capture flag. And this flag will be set whenever there is a rising or a falling edge pulse uh, input at pin input capture for timer 1. A circuit diagram of the implemented system is shown here. The trigger line is connected to pin PB1 of port B. And the echo line is connected to the input capture pin of timer 1. And we have a MAC7219 display connected with the controller using SPI connection. The algorithm used in this project is shown here. We first initialize the I.O. ports of the microcontroller. Then we send the trigger high pulse and then apply a delay of 10 microseconds using timer 0. And then we send the trigger low pulse and this completes the 10 microsecond trigger pulse. Next we initialize timer 1 for input capture at rising edge and wait for the rising edge from the sensor. Once we have the rising edge, we store the timer 1 count value C1. And then we initialize timer 1 for input capture for falling edge. And then wait for the falling edge from the sensor. Once we have that, 
we store the timer one count value C2. Then we calculate the distance, which is approximately the difference between the two count values. And then we convert the byte value of the distance to two digit decimal value to be displayed on the MAX7219 display. And then we apply a delay in a few milliseconds and then go to point A, which is to send the trigger pulse once again. Now we look at the sketch used in the project. Within the INO file, we have uh, within the setup function this uh, function that will initialize the MAX7219. And then the next function will send some text and letters to the uh, MAX7219 display. And then this function will be used to communicate with the HCSR04 sensor. Now we look at the assembly code within the S file and inside the subroutine we set to pin PB1 as output which will represent the trigger pin and we set to pin PB0 as the input pin which will represent the echo pin and then we send the uh, high pulse of the echo and then call this uh, delay for 10 microseconds using timer 0 and then we send the low pulse and this would generate the required 10 microsecond uh, trigger pulse. Next we call this function to compute the echo pulse width and then we call this function to convert the byte into two digit decimal and to display it on the MAX7219. And then we apply a delay in milliseconds and then we jump back to again and repeat the process. Inside subroutine echo pulse width we program timer 1 so that uh, it is in normal mode and then we program the control register B so that we have a rising edge detection and prescaler of 1024 and the noise cancellation is on. Next we use this indefinite loop checking the input capture flag of timer 1. When the rising edge pulse is detected, this flag will be set. So we can then leave the loop and go to the next level, which is to store the count value, which is in the input capture register low byte, and save it in register R16. So this would be C1. Once we have the first count value stored in our register, the next step is to clear the flag register of timer 1 so that timer 1 is ready to receive the falling edge. We program the control register so that timer 1 is set for falling edge detection and then we go into this indefinite loop waiting for the input capture flag to set. Once it is set then we store the count value in, which is in input capture register low byte and save it in register R28. Then we calculate the difference between the two count values which represents approximately the distance. And then we clear the flag register again so that the sensor is ready for the next pulse. And then we go back to the main subroutine. In a future video, I2C temperature and humidity sensor AM2320 will be programmed using assembly. Thank you for watching.